we're forcing people to speak our language, like right. not trying to navigate or fit into a space where we don't necessarily belong or try to fit into a space that we don't care to belong to, right. but instead inviting them into our world. Right. We'll give you an authentic view of what it means to be black yeah. in America today. There's this movie out right now called Queen and Slim about a black couple that shoots a police officer in what they claim is self-defense and then flees the scene. And if you Google this movie, the plot summary actually reads, quote, Slim and Queen's first date takes an unexpected turn when a policeman pulls them over for a minor traffic violation. When the situation escalates, Slim takes the officer's gun and shoots him in self-defense. So you can kind of get an idea what this movie's about, the message that it's trying to send. So I went to go see it so that we could analyze it, but I also wanted to get an idea for how the black community was reacting to it. So me, cameraman Badan, and proxy cameraman Matrix went to a black theater to watch this movie. Remember, I'm very close to Detroit. And uh, the crowd reaction was interesting, so do stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. We're going to analyze this movie, which is literal propaganda. Propaganda being defined as information, especially of biased or misleading nature, used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point of view. And I'll take you through how the crowd reacted to it at each step of the way. Because remember, this movie is a black movie, and it's being marketed towards a black audience. And it is pushing the narrative that blacks are unfairly targeted by police because of institutional racism in this country. And that is ultimately because of white people. But first, I got to thank those of you that are supporting the channel over at Heck Off People like Leah, people like Christy, people like David, they make this possible. And remember, we're giving Giving out the epic Christmas sweaters to people with memberships. I am literally fighting Bernie Sanders. Very epic, but yeah. Um, I showed you some of what the creators were thinking when they were making this movie in the beginning. And I'll keep referencing the reasons for doing certain things as we go through this because it's all significant. And some people will say, well, that's just overanalyzing. You're just looking for meaning that isn't there. But with things like this, virtually everything that you're seeing was intentionally included. Someone had to make the decision to include it. Maybe their decision was purely inconsequential, but it's still important to analyze it because meaning could be there. But before we get into the political implications of this movie, I'll just tell you what I thought of it generally in case you want to go see it. Uh, this was a boring movie. And it's not just because I disagreed with it politically. Like there have been plenty of movies uh, with messages that I've disagreed with that I actually really enjoyed. Like Vice with Christian Bale would probably be the most recent example. I thought that movie was epic. But this movie literally only had one redeeming quality, which is its soundtrack. And it's like the only reason you notice that is because of how much driving there is. It's like basically they go from location to location to location. And there's intentionally little to no character development because the creators of this movie wanted Queen and Slim to be archetypal for the black community, which is why they're never even called those names in the movie. They're just supposed to represent the average black man and the average black woman because black women get to be queens and black men just get to be slim. So that's why I don't even feel bad about spoiling this movie. Like there were maybe three or four interesting plot developments and I'm not kidding I predicted every one about 30 seconds before it happened like out loud like there's this part uh, where there's this protest and there's this young black kid he's like 14 and he's staring down this black cop and I just said to cameraman Madan I was like yo he's about to go joker mode and next thing you know straight up pulls out a 1911 he shoots this cop in the face and when that happened I started clapping because I wanted to see if anyone else would start clapping and I kid you not this entire theater erupted in applause it's you know it's like one of those uh, and then everyone started clapping stories except this legitimately happened and if you don't believe me, go to a black theater and watch this movie and then clap when the cop gets shot in the face because I guarantee you they will all start clapping and the reason for that is because of this cultural narrative which is reinforced by movies like this the black community largely believes that police are legitimately their enemy. And I don't think there's anything wrong with clapping when your enemy gets shot in the face, frankly. But what's alarming is if who you perceive to be your enemy is not actually your enemy. And in fact, they're trying to help you and help your community. But, you know, I'm getting carried away. We'll come back to this, but we'll go through the movie now. So it starts off with the main characters. They're uh, in this diner. They're on their first date. They met on Tinder. We find out that she's an attorney, which is important. So they leave the diner. Uh, they're driving. She's changing the music on his phone. And then he starts like... No, she starts going through it and he starts getting mad at her. So he reaches to like get his phone back and then the car starts to swerve because he was distracted. But he straightens it out, so it's all good. But then this cop like puts his lights on. So they pull over and then the cop walks up to them. And I'll tell you, the most shocking part about this movie was this scene because of how little they actually tried to make the shooting of the police officer justified. I honestly thought that this movie was going to make the shooting completely justified and then have the police and the media turn on them to showcase how evil America is or whatever, but they didn't even try that. The first thing, and it's insignificant, but still, when the cop comes up to the window, all the windows are still up, they're still playing music at a high volume, and it's like, you don't do that during a traffic stop. You roll down your windows, you turn off your music, both hands on the wheel, and it's like, yeah, it's annoying 
annoying, but unless you're being pulled over on, what is it, I-80? As a general rule, the easier you make the cop's job, the easier your life is going to be, roughly speaking. So, anyways, the cop starts giving him a hard time because he's white and racist, and it just makes you roll your eyes because it's so fake. And then he ends up going back, he radios in a possible DUI, uh, and when that happened, everyone in the theater was groaning, like, wow, a DUI? Wow. Cops are... <clears throat> and I kind of agree with them, slightly. I don't know, it's like... He didn't swerve that much, maybe the cop was just trying to be a dick, but at the same time, it's not completely unwarranted. So, then he comes back, he asks the guy to get out of the car, presumably to make him walk in a straight line, and the guy's like, may I ask why, officer? And the cops, because he's evil and white, is like, no, get out of the car, boy! And so the guy gets out, cop pats him down, asks uh, to search the trunk, Guy consents to the search. Meanwhile, the woman starts showing off her epic lawyer skills on the cop. Uh, sovereign citizen owns cop 2019. She's like, you can't do that. You don't have a warrant. The cop is like, chill out. He consented. And so here's where it gets interesting. I am not even kidding. The black guy just asks the officer, hey, can you hurry up? And the cop says, what? And the black guy says, oh, it's just cold out. And the cop thinks about it for a second and then literally draws his gun on the guy and starts screaming at him to get on the ground. And I couldn't help myself. I just started laughing at how fake this is. Like, they really weren't even trying anymore. And this is the problem because I went to go see it with my friends. And so this is happening. So obviously propaganda, so obviously fake and exaggerated. And then proxy cameraman Matrix to my left is just like, John, you shouldn't be laughing right now. This is what black people go through every day in this country, which just made it funnier. Because if you actually think that because this movie is supposed to represent the archetypal black relationship, with police and therefore that interaction represents the typical black interaction with police you are literally delusional you are buying into a false narrative and it's really sad to see that so many black people have bought into this narrative of the police are racist they hate us etc so and then the guy's like, okay, I'll get on the ground. The woman's like, you can't do this. What is your badge number? I'm reaching for my phone. The cop says, no, keep your hands where I can see them. She doesn't listen. She puts her hands in her pockets, and the cop shoots her in the leg. A non-fatal shot just grazes her. So then the guy gets up off the ground, tackles the cop. They fight for a bit on the ground. He ends up grabbing the cop's gun and shooting him, and the cop falls down dead. So the couple decides to flee the scene because even though they're both 100% sure that the shooting was self-defense, the police and the media won't care. So their only choice is to flee. The problem is that this shooting would not be classified as self-defense. It would not be classified as a reasonable use of deadly force. The officer had his gun drawn on the guy. Definitely not necessary. The dash cam picked that up. There would have been an investigation into that. But after that happened, the officer specifically told the woman to keep her hands where he could see them. She didn't listen. He shot her in the leg. The guy tackles the cop, takes his gun, kills him. And here's why that's not justified. In order for deadly force to be justified, you have to have a reasonable belief that using deadly force is necessary to prevent great bodily harm to you or someone else. So when the cop had his gun drawn and told her not to reach into her pockets, her reaching into her pockets anyways could mean that she's reaching for a gun. So the cop was justified in using his weapon and he only hit her in the leg. Now, you might think that the guy was justified in shooting the cop because he was just trying to prevent great bodily harm being done to the woman, except the cop was justified already in his use. That would be like uh, you brandishing a weapon while robbing a gas station and then me shooting the guy with a concealed pistol license after he drew it to stop you. Like, yes, I was preventing great bodily harm from being done to you by definition, but the man with the CPL was justified just as the police officer was justified by the woman's actions. Sure, he was being a dick. That's the way his character was written, but legally speaking, he didn't do anything wrong. Police are no longer justified in using force once uh, compliance has been established. The only reason that additional force would have been employed is if they failed to comply, which is exactly what happened. So the only reason the guy had to fear for his life is because he tackled the officer and then tried to grab his gun, at which point the police officer is also in fear for his life, except the man is the obvious aggressor. There is literally no way to argue that the shooting was justified, but yet the entire movie presupposes that it was justified. Michael Brown beats a police officer in the face, goes for his gun, and then charges him, but that shooting is not justified. Hands up, don't shoot. Remember that? That slogan's based on a lie that he had his hands up and was shot in the back, except there's virtually no evidence of that. Or what about when Trayvon, uh, Trayvon Martin beat a guy's head into the pavement? But that shooting was not justified. But uh, if this guy tackles a cop, takes his gun, and then shoots him because the cop shot his Tinder date in the leg because she was reaching into her pockets after he specifically told her not to, that's justified. And the other thing, after these shootings, where a guy will run at a police with a knife or something, and they're always like, why didn't you shoot him in the leg? He could have aimed at the leg, racist! Well, here's one. He shot her in the leg, but I guess that doesn't matter because all that matters is maintaining this false narrative of blacks being victimized by police. And so at this point, the woman is like, we have to flee or else we're going to go to prison for the rest of our lives. Let's go to Cuba, like Asada Shakur. And the guy's like, oh, you mean that woman that killed the state trooper? And the woman just barks at him like, allegedly. Which again, it just makes you roll your eyes because Asada Shakur was convicted of first degree murder. She was a member of the Black Liberation Army, a terrorist organization, and she fled to Cuba. And it's like, 
Really? You're defending her? It's just allegedly, it's uh, okay. You know, there's another scene like this too. They're driving past this field of black prisoners and they're working outside and then there's a white cop on a horse and he's supervising them. And the movie wants this to be this very powerful metaphor for how slavery and racism in America never really ended. And that's why our characters are in this position in the first place, which to its intended audience probably makes sense, but it's just not true. And we'll go over all of that, why institutional racism is just total nonsense. Uh, but that scene with the cop is the most significant in the movie. And following that, they proceed to kidnap a sheriff and steal his car. Uh, they meet this little black boy and his dad. They both regard Queen and Slim to be heroes for killing the cop. Uh, we find out that the cop they had killed had shot a black boy and didn't go to jail for it, which is likely supposed to be a reference to, to the Tamir Rice shooting, which is where a 12-year-old boy was shot and killed after police received calls that he was pointing a gun at people. And the creators of this film said that they were inspired by that incident, but it turns out that the gun was just an airsoft, uh, but it had the orange tip removed, and then the boy appeared to be reaching for it when the police confronted him, which, you know, horribly tragic situation. But again, it could have been easily avoided. It's like, where were the parents? Why did he have an airsoft gun that was modified to look real? Why was he pointing it at people? These are the correct questions to be asking. But anyways, in the movie, this is implicitly supposed to justify the death of the cop at the hands of Queen and Slim. So then they keep traveling. Every black person they meet is in support of them, calls them heroes, etc. Except this mechanic guy, who says he doesn't approve of it, but his son does, and his son ends up being the one that we talked about earlier because there's a scene where they juxtapose Queen and Slim having the most graphic sex I've ever seen in a movie before in their car with a bunch of black people protesting and clashing with police, and that scene culminates with the young boy facing off with this black police officer and then blowing his head off with a 1911. And, you know, we find out later that that boy ended up being killed afterwards, but we don't see it. And again, we were the only white people in the theater, and the entire theater was cheering when he shot the cop in the face. It's like, what kind of message is that sending? Whatever that message is, it's obviously being well-received by much of the black community. And again, if you don't believe me, go to a black theater and watch this movie. The message of this movie and of this scene in particular is that the police are bad and that the reason the police are bad is because white people are bad. White people are racist. White people hate black people. And there's another scene. Uh, they're sneaking out of a house surrounded by police and they break into the neighbor's garage and they steal the neighbor's car. And so there's this black cop who's stationed nearby and he's like, I think I hear something. And then the white cop that he's stationed with starts giving him a hard time. Like, no, it was just an animal city boy. And then the black cop is like, don't call me boy. And it's like, oh my, it's like so fake. But okay, so the black cop, he goes to investigate he opens up the garage door and he catches Queen and Slim sitting in the car. And then he just kind of steps aside and he motions for them to go. And again, everyone in the theater started cheering. It's like, yeah, who cares about the neighbor? Who cares about the neighbor's car? All that matters is that these people go to Cuba because F the police. And, you know, the black cop goes back, talks to the white cop, and he's like, you were right. It was nothing. And then the white cop is like, of course I was right, you stupid idiot. And so they end up getting to this guy who's going to arrange for them to fly to Cuba and I guess uh, just be in Cuba for the rest of their lives. So this fat black guy is like, all right, let's go to the plane. So he drops them off. They're walking across the tarmac towards the Indiana Jones looking plane. And then right when they're about 50 feet from it, about a dozen cop cars come swarming in. There's a helicopter. They're just totally screwed. The cops all form a line. They've got their doors open, their guns drawn. Uh, they're yelling at them through a megaphone to get down. And then Queen and Slim, they're just kind of standing there not doing anything, and then a white female cop just shoots Queen in the chest for no reason, because obviously this happens all the time, and there doesn't need to be a reason, and so Queen falls on the ground dead, and so then Slim just kind of like hugs her dead body, and then picks her up and cradles her, and starts walking slowly towards the police while carrying her body, and the police are telling him to stop, but he won't, and then they literally light this guy up like I have never seen before in my life. This dude's getting shot at by all the cops, his entire body just becomes red from blood, and he just falls down dead with Queen like still in his arms, and this was supposed to be this real powerful powerful scene, the, you know, the one that really shows you how evil police are towards blacks. And it's like, really? They wouldn't have just tackled him since his hands were visibly occupied carrying this woman. They wouldn't have tased him or maybe just shot him one time. All 12 or so police would have just lit him up from 100 feet away. Like, okay. You know, and this, this big dramatic scene is happening and it cuts back to the fat black guy that drove them there to the tarmac and he's got like $500,000 in cash because we find out that he turned them in for the bounty money and then the creators of the movie said that they did this to show how black men have fallen victim to capitalism, how he was more concerned with eating than he was with his own community. And it's like, first of all, the dude was pretty fat. Like, he's not that concerned with eating. And even if he is, you can eat for a lot less than $500,000. He was just greedy. And that's not the fault of capitalism. That's the fault of human nature. At least under capitalism, you know, if you're greedy, you just work more and then, you know, utilize more tax loopholes or something. Whereas under socialism, if you're greedy, it means that people are going to have to die probably. 
Also noteworthy is that Queen was shot by a white female cop, and the creator said that they did this to symbolize how white feminism harms the black community. So to all those white feminists out there, just know that only believing in equality between the sexes is not enough for these people anymore. If you don't believe in complete and total equality of outcome between all groups, then you are their enemy, and they're going to depict you as a murderer in their films, a murderer of the supposed innocent. And that's the other thing about this whole movie. It very obviously is supposed to be a Bonnie and Clyde story. There's even a part in the movie where uh, one of the black supporters that they meet refers to them as the black Bonnie and Clyde. And we can see this through the title of the movie. I mean, Bonnie and Clyde, Queen and Slim. Uh, but there's an important distinction to be made between the two couples, which is mainly that Bonnie and Clyde knew that they were wrong. Bonnie and Clyde were criminals. They were actually worse criminals, but they were very aware of that. Whereas Queen and Slim are also criminals, but they're not convinced of that. They are convinced that everything they do, whether it's shooting the police officer, kidnapping the sheriff, stealing a car, all of that's justified. And that's what the audience is also made to believe. I mean, after the movie ended, everyone in my theater was yelling, F the police, Black Lives Matter. And you sort of have to ask yourself, what sort of negative impact is something as simple as this movie going to have on the black community? I mean, the Black Lives Matter movement has basically disappeared. We can theorize why, but that movement was built upon a lie in the first place. Hands up, don't shoot was a lie. This movie is also built on a lie. The idea is that, well, the reason blacks are disproportionately shot by police is because police are racist, and so everyone sort of thought, okay, that makes sense. Um, but then if you actually statistically analyze police shootings, the study that did this on the largest scale came from Michigan State University, you'll find that white cops are not more likely to shoot minority suspects. And so now what they're saying to adjust is, well, it's not just the white cops, the minority cops are doing it too because of the institutional racism that's affected them as a result of the white cops. And so you sort of have to ask yourself how many new defenses they're going to employ before they finally accept the truth. And the answer is probably infinite. But that's what this movie did. That's why they had the black cop get shot. They were sending a message that black police officers are not serving the interests of the black community, when in fact every black police officer that I've ever spoken with has told me that the reason he became a police officer is to protect his community, and the fact that someone like, like that would be demonized to fuel this false narrative of victimization is an absolute disgrace. And that's why this movie is so dangerous. This movie insists upon itself. This movie insists upon itself. The movie is trying to showcase the black perception of police and race in America, yet the only thing that creates that perception in the first place is movies like this. The only thing that this movie is shedding light on is what other false narratives have already cemented as fact. Everything that this movie wants you to think that it's so brave for exposing is just a product of similar propaganda. If it weren't for movies like this, movements like this, stories like this built upon lies, perhaps when one of them happens to be made once in a blue moon. You wouldn't have a theater of 200 people screaming F the police and cheering when one of them gets shot in the face by a child. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, give it a big subscribe to the channel, leave it a comment with your thoughts. I wouldn't go see this movie again. I saw Joe. I don't even know how many times I saw Joker. I, it's somewhere between five and 10, but I honestly lost track. But this movie is going to stay at a solid one. Not a big fan. And not only because the politics, and I'm just repeating my points I just made, but whatever. Thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Ka-chow.